Hello and welcome. I'm Sarah and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about how methylene blue works because in my membership group people often ask about methylene blue. So the video is something that I recorded in one of our live Zoom calls and if you want to join my monthly coaching group the link is in the description. I haven't gone over everything that methylene blue does and I'm not advocating it or selling it either so this is just for your education and I focus quite a lot on what methylene blue does in the mitochondria and I haven't gone into how methylene blue can deliver nitric oxide to cells or how methylene blue changes the oxidation state of iron and how that influences oxygen delivery because methylene blue can has multiple functions. So I hope you find this interesting. Okay, so first of all, this isn't going to be medical advice and I'm not advocating it or anything. And this is for education only. And when you come to look at doses for methylene blue, IV methylene blue is very different to oral. And a lot of the doses that you might see on the Internet are referring to IV. So that's why some people accidentally take far too much because they were using the intravenous um, dose recommendations. And like anything, if you are going to try it, you always want to start off with a small amount. So even though something like half um, a milligram per kilogram is the lowest dose that's sort of generally recommended, a lot of people just start with something much less like 10 milligrams. So you'll see why. So methylene blue has been studied quite a lot. So there are about over 700 papers that uh, have been published on it. So there's plenty of information and research out there. So it isn't some weird biohacking thing that somebody just invented in the last 10 years. So the reason people, the general public are interested is because it can provide mitochondrial support. So I'll show you how um, in a moment. So that means it can be antioxidative, which is also anti-inflammatory. Um, it can deplete deuterium in the TCA cycle, and people also call that the Krebs cycle or the tricitric acid cycle. And also I'll show you with the picture um, what that is. Then it can um, change the oxidation states of iron, so it can reduce um, the heme group to methemoglobin. So that's why people use it in the IR room, uh, the emergent ER room for things like carbon monoxide poisoning, because it can uh, release um, that and rescue your, your sort of... Um, blood cells but also there's a lot more to do with iron and methylene blue because if you take it in in a high dose it, it can do the opposite and again for some people fiddling about with their iron isn't the best idea then it can be used for unknown infections this is like the sort of generally what people use it for but um, even at the turn of the 19th century um, or the beginning, the end of the 19th century, it was used as an anti-malarial, but it can be antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. So it's general. Um, that's why it comes. It's like ozone therapy. That's something that's well, the one way you do it with your blood. The uh, 10 pass. That's another treatment that's an unknown infection that people tend to use. The, the problems come with it with uh, methylene blue because it's an SSRI and it's a CP450 inhibitor. So that's to do with um, activities in the liver and neurotransmitters. So first of all, um, how how does it work or how does it help with mitochondrial function? So in other Q&As, and, you, and you'll just keep seeing this electron transport chain picture over and over and over, because even if somebody doesn't learn anything or understand anything, if you can understand the electron transport chain, that's a massive um, bonus and really useful. So the electrons go in, which is the current, and they go through the five steps and deuterium depleted water and ATP and carbon dioxide come out the other end. So in order to function well, we want to have good current flow. So plenty of electrons going down the electron transport chain and not escaping and causing inflammation. So what methylene blue can do, it can um, help if something's happened in the electron transport chain, say if you had cyanide poisoning, because that would affect complex one, step one. So that blocks up the current flow. That's why it kills people. So methylene blue can make the electrons jump the queue. So they skip over step two and three and go sort of in between step three and four. So that's how it helps the, the current flow or the electron flow in the mitochondria. So, so that's why people use it for 
mitochondrial problems because you don't have to have cyanide poisoning to have your electron transport chain not working very well so that's one reason of why people use it and that's kind of quite understandable for everybody it's making the electrons jump the queue to get to the end because you they want to get to the end because that's when they the water making and the atp making happen and then the electrons bind with oxygen and that's the end of the cycle so the oxygen being there matters as well. And that's important to a question somebody asked. So the, the other thing that's important about methylene blue and um, this, this electron transport chain, their hydrogen or H plus need to go into this or protons because they need to go down the ATPAs. It's like a molecular motor and that's how it turns and that's how the ATP comes out. So it's the way that the hydrogen and the water uh, interact as well. And that's why red lights can help make this um, spin faster because somebody was asking a question, can I use red light with methylene blue? So if, if the methylene blue is helping to make the current go down, the electrons and the red light is helping the ATPAs to spin, to, that's going to be a good combination. So yes, you can use red light therapy. You know, her question was about using it up your nose. You don't need to stick anything up there. You just shine the light up there around your head, around the problem area. So yes, they're compatible with each other. So the other thing um, to do with these hydrogens, if a deuterium gets into the electron transport chain area or the matrix and tries to go down the ATPase, it's going to break it. And that's that's going to be a disaster. So the TCA cycle is a, a big series of steps of how your food is processed to make sure a deuterium is unlikely to get in and break everything. So what methylene blue can do, it can go in, in to the TCA cycle and help to deplete the deuterium in here because sometimes people get overloaded with deuterium and sometimes in certain certain cancers and other situations that the Krebs cycle isn't working properly anymore so, so you're obviously wide open to having a mitochondrial problem so that's where methylene blue comes into sort of disease treatment because it ha can help clear out the deuterium from the, the the TCA cycle so that only hydrogen goes back into the mitochondria so we don't carry on creating damage so 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 far this is looking like really promising of, of yeah i'd want to use this so, so this is where the this is why some people love methylene blue and some people hate it because it can raise other neurotransmitters not just serotonin like dopamine and possibly noradrenaline and changing these levels in some people makes them really cranky and angry and agitated and anxious and that's one of the sort of chief things when people try methylene blue and didn't like it they just said that they felt weird because there wasn't anything wrong with their neurotransmitters levels to start with and then the methylene blue has gone and changed things and too much of anything isn't a good idea anyway then on that subject if you are going to use methylene blue don't mix it with ssris um it's not a good idea and it's also dopamine erasing drugs like Welbutrin or Deprenil um, and Adderall as well can raise it. And also things like MDMA, other psychedelics like psilocybin, mescaline and LSD, they all work on the serotonin system anyway. And adding methylene blue in there, it, it could affect something. So, so it's not, you know, some people will say it's really dangerous. Most likely you'll just not feel great. And because uh, methylene blue is an SSRI, some people get gut issues with anything that's got serotonin related. So it's antidepressants do it, mushrooms as in psychedelic mushrooms make them feel sick. And then other things like people, some figs can release an, a lot of serotonin and have it in them as well. And that and figs can set some people off. So there are certain people who have guts that are sensitive to serotonin. So they end up with a weird reaction to methylene blue because of the SSRI factor. Then when it comes to what's this cytochrome in the liver, Basically, this cytochrome breaks down metabolites, as in, we'd say, drugs and uh, things like that, and some toxins. So, so, so methylene blue can change the rate of drug metabolism. So that can be a problem for people who are using medication already or other supplements, because it might mean that the thing they're taking builds up and they end up with too much of it and then they that can cause them a problem as well so, so on the whole for somebody that's not taking any medication and are, in, are in, just interested in mitochondrial function 
and don't uh, have any serotonin reactions in the gut. It's perfectly fine. And, and it can be really helpful and beneficial for all sorts of things um, from um, mood boosting to uh, traveling because it can help with sort of problems with um, EMFs and stuff on airplanes and trains because obviously your mitochondria um, are better protected than anything to do with infections or recovering from an infection uh, that it can work really well for that so that's why it's got a big following there's there's more that it does as well but if I say too much it overwhelms people and they get confused and some people just want to know what does it do, what's useful, and what's the side effects. And then, like I said about the dosages, it's all you'd always start with um, a low dose, like maybe ten milligrams. And sometimes I just do it to, to where the pea is like turquoise or, or or green because it will make you do blue pea. Uh, and that's why some people use higher doses for bladder infections and UTIs and stuff because they actually need a higher dose. And it can, if you take too much, sometimes you can just get an uncomfortable feeling in your bladder for a bit and then peeing can be a bit uncomfortable. But but again, it, uh, that's, there are, or, you know, like anything that's quite powerful, there's going to be possible side effects. Then the other thing about the serotonin, which is really important, this people have known this for ages. It's just not been properly published. And there was a paper out last year that just looked at all of the studies of serotonin and uh, drugs for raising serotonin in depression. And they just concluded that there's no evidence between uh, serotonin levels and depression. And there's no support for the hypothesis that depression is caused by low serotonin and that some antidepressants actually reduce serotonin over time. So, so this is back to, again, people who maybe watch this in the future or do take SSRIs. They don't actually do what they say they do, as in um, help with depression because of serotonin levels. Yes, they do other things. And yes, there's a placebo effect. But on the whole, it, there are better things out there for dealing with depression. But then at the uh, there's another paper out about circadian uh, biology and depression. So uh, serotonin does play a big role, but not in the way we think, because also we need all of our sunlight in the morning to make the serotonin to make melatonin. And if we don't sleep properly or have decent melatonin, that's going to cause mood problems and depression as well. So, yes, of course, it plays a role, but it's not just taking drugs that uh, raise your serotonin like SSRIs isn't going to be helpful. Right. So now we move into the other the other part of this little presentation, which is to do with um, sex hormones. So I've added men in as well, although I have done women because somebody's asked questions about Dutch tests. And that. OK, so that's enough for today. And I hope you found that interesting. I haven't uploaded any videos for a while because I've been working on making some courses and also I've got five or six podcast to upload with people like Dr. Cruz, Dr. Seneff, Dr. Clinton. So there's lots of really good interviews and interesting guests coming up soon. So again, if you want to ask questions and join my membership group, uh, the link is in the description and I hope to see you in there. Or if you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe and thanks for watching.